Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? Uh, I thought you'd never ask. Let's do the whole darn weekend. Saturday, February the 9th, is National Pizza Day. Ooh, yeah, let's celebrate that one. Also, National Toothache Day. Let's not celebrate that one. <laughs> National Bagel Day. And it used to be Bagel and Locks Day. Now it's just Bagel Day. No locks. Okay. So free those bagels. It's also uh, February the 10th, Sunday, National Home Warranty Day, National Umbrella Day, and National Cream Cheese Brownie Day, which is really good. Doesn't sound like it would be, but it's really good. You ever have cream cheese brownies? Uh, uh, yeah, I think mm. I have. Also, I got a guest today, going to be visiting with Mary Dale Peterson. She's a doctor, so I guess it's Dr. Mary Dale Peterson, going to be talking about the opioids epidemic. So all of that and much more on this weekend edition of the john and heidi show thank you so much for listening do you have a pretty good sense of humor you might like this early in the morning each day and every day we share something weird to make people laugh at weirdgiftoftheday.com you don't need to sign up for anything you don't even need to spend a penny just follow the page on facebook and get a smile to start each day when we share the weird gift of the day not on facebook that's okay you can see the weird gifts on our website too weirdgiftoftheday.com that's Weird gift of the day dot com. Time now for surveys and studies and such. We've got a survey from Fast Company. They found that three quarters of health news that's shared on the internet is false. Three quarters hmm. of health news. Wow, that that's, just makes me sick. That's a lot. <laughs> it, it doesn't really make me sick because that would be one of those things that would be false. But three quarters of the internet health news is not true. Hmm. So keep that in mind next time you read a study yeah, really. about health news, like the one we just read. This one might actually be one of them that's not <laughs> right. Wouldn't that be ironic? Coming up, we've got your brain on drugs. Credit cards. For years, I didn't use credit cards. We paid off all of our debt and we quit using credit altogether. But then our credit score went down. It was affecting our insurance rates. Not sure why, but that's tied to your credit score. I'm not suggesting you rack up credit card debt just to rack up credit card debt. But my wife and I now each use a credit card and then we pay them off every month. It's helped our credit score. But not all cards are the same. Some cards are better than others. If you'd like to find one that's the best fit for you, check out bettercreditcards.net. That's bettercreditcards.net. And this is your brain on drugs. Federal agents have arrested a California nurse on suspicion of running an illegal online pharmacy that sold more than 20,000 opioid prescription pills. That's a lot. Uh, the Sacramento Bee reported that, uh, let's see, Carrie Ann, I'm sorry, Carrie Elaine Marcus is who she is. She could face charges including distribution and conspiracy. And she's 46. She earned tens of thousands of dollars selling drugs via a marketplace on the dark net. It was called Pharmacy 41. Pharmacy F-A-R-M-A-C-Y. Okay. That's, you know. Newspaper said that she uh, was identified in court papers as a master's degree in nursing and science and health care leadership. The U.S. Attorney's Office in Sacramento led the efforts to have a nationwide crackdown on hidden websites that purport to offer untraceable sales of drugs. Well, apparently they're traceable because they tracked her down. So there you go. Then again, this is health news from the internet. So, <laughs> so it might not be true. If uh, if our other story was correct, this one could be wrong. But that is definitely what happens when your brain is on illegal drugs. John and Heidi. Now, big screen, little screen. Andy Cohen welcomed a baby boy via surrogate last Tuesday. Congratulations, Andy. Who's that? Now, you weren't supposed to ask me. I don't know. <laughs> He's a celebrity, Heidi. Well, congratulations, Andy. Yeah. Congratulations, Andy. Don't ever call me on things like that. <laughs> if, I, if you don't know who it is, I probably don't know who it is either. Now I'm going to have to Google that. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Science have decided that the 2019 Academy Awards, that's also known as the Oscars, will have no host for the first time in three decades. It is now official. This announcement follows a week-long search, a couple week-long searches, actually, or a couple weeks long search. That sounds kind of weird to say. It's because nobody wants to do it. Well, originally Kevin Hart was going to do it. Then he stepped down because there was a bunch of backlash well, over yeah. a comment that was made on Twitter a long, long time ago. Uh, he initially failed to offer an apology when the Academy sought his explanation for the tweets. And he just said, I just won't be the host. That's easy. So uh, 
He's done very well since then, by the way. A lot of sellout shows because there are people that are coming out to support the guy. They're going, okay, We're that was a long time ago. We are sick of everybody yeah. being crucified. It's so, ridiculous. Uh, anyway, I think it actually helped his career, which you wouldn't think that would have helped his career. But uh, no host for the Oscars. We'll see how that goes. This has been Big Screen, Little Screen, brought to you by ChannelSurferTV.com. Join us in Las Vegas for 80s in the desert. Hear awesome 80s music from Scandal featuring Patti Smythe, A Flock of Seagulls, Richard Page of Mr. Mister, Tony Lewis from the Outfield, Pretty Poison, Thomas Dolby, and more. Also, meet people from your favorite 80s movies like Robert Hayes from Airplane, E.G. Daly from Valley Girl, and more. May 3rd and May 4th. Get more info now at 80sinthedesert.rocks. Use promo code RADIO to save $25 per ticket. Now your scoop of the day, brought to you by BetterCreditCards.net. The Boy Scouts of America welcomed their first all-girl troop this last week. Now, I thought I read somewhere they were going to just call it the Scouts. The I Scouts thought they were going to be integrated boys and girls. No. If I read the story correctly, I, I thought I saw it on Twitter. It was going to be the Scouts BSA, because BSA is Boy Scouts of America. So, I don't know. Maybe I read it wrong. But there's a link to that story if you want to read it. Right, but why it. would they have an all-girls troop? I mean... <sighs> it's two different things. Because the Girl Scouts did one thing, the Boy Scouts did a different thing, and that's why there were girls going, hey, I want to learn what they're learning. And I'm sure there's probably boys that are going, I want to learn what they're learning. <laughs> so uh, it's the most two ridiculous well, no, thing. Honestly, it's ridiculous <sighs> because it's always been one way. So I understand where you're going, well, why? You know, But it's... Two different curriculum, curriculum, curriculums, curriculums. So, if you want to learn those things, I understand that, and I know there's a lot of people wound up about it. And I'm not trying to take a side. I'm just saying all I read was the first all girl girl troop from the Boy Scouts. Uh, they had their first meeting this last week. I've got a link in the show notes if you want to read all about it. Uh, the Russian Navy has developed a new weapon that makes its target hallucinate and vomit. Wow, oh. that seems kind of weird. So they discovered tequila? <laughs> That's kind of a supernatural kind of a Apparently, thing. Yeah, Russian Navy has a new weapon that makes their targets hallucinate and vomit. And Yikes. then we've only got one more story, but I thought we might want to spend some time on this one. That's why I saved a little t- time for this. An Uber driver from Kalamazoo, Michigan, pled guilty last month to the murders of six people. Whoa. Was sentenced in to pr- life in prison without parole this last week. Jason Dalton was convicted in 2016 of fatally shooting uh, four people in the parking lot of a Cracker Barrel and two more in the parking lot of a car dealership. The two other victims were shot but survived. He allegedly told police after he was arrested that a, quote, devil figure inside the Uber app controlled him during the shootings, according to the Associated Press. Wow. What in the world was going on (laughs) there? There's a whole lot going on. Here's the thing that I don't understand. Um, I, I guess... Maybe the reason Uber is involved is because the devil in the app is what told him to do it. But was he? These weren't his passengers, were they? It was uh, it says here he shot two, let's see four people in a parking lot at a Cracker Barrel, and then two other victims were shot but survived. So the thing I don't understand is how they drag Uber into this. You know, I don't. Know. And they keep saying that he's a Uber driver, and I guess I just said that like six times in this story. I have nothing against Uber. I don't understand how, like, if if this person worked for a bank, would they say, you know, the banker from blankety blank bank? Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't understand how it seems like that company had nothing to do with this, and it wasn't part of his job. So that's where I just thought that was really bizarre that that company has kind of maybe they brought up the company name because that's how he ac- had access. Because if they called Uber and that's why he was shooting them at that location, yeah, I don't know. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It says some in the parking lot of a Cracker Barrel, and then two other victims that shot were shot but survived. And I guess maybe the reason that that company keeps getting brought up is because uh, he says a devil figure inside their app controlled him during the shootings. I don't know. It's just very confusing. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Some of the stuff that I read, I feel like that's something like an episode of Supernatural, <laughs> mm-hmm. doesn't it? Yeah, so I said. Doesn't it's seem like, a- like real life stuff, but. That's the world we live in. There's some bizarre things. Uh, Speaking of bizarre things, we've got uh, a lot of fun stuff to get to between now and the end of the program. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show this weekend. Do you have IRS tax problems? Are they keeping you up at night? Afraid to open your own mail or even answer your telephone? 
If your tax problems are affecting your family life, you need to know you have options, you have rights, and we'll make sure you get them. Call and speak with Mike Habib, the tax expert who will handle your case at 877-78-TAXES or online at myirstaxrelief.com. That's 877-78-TAXES or myirstaxrelief.com. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show. We have a guest joining us today, Dr. Mary Dale Peterson, and she is with the American Society of Anesthesiologists, and she is the president-elect, and we're going to be talking about a, a pretty important topic here. First, let's say hello to Dr. Mary Dale Peterson. How are you? I'm great. Well, thank you so much for taking some time to, to visit with us here. Opioids, people see this in the news all the time, and it's it's a very important topic. Let's first, just you know, assuming people know nothing, because there may be somebody that's never heard of it, what, is, what does that even mean? What are opioids? Opioids are medications. They're actually very old, but it's drugs like... Morphine, fentanyl, Oxycontin, uh, Vicodin, Lortab, those are sort of the common names um, for opioids. It's a specific class of drugs that hit certain receptors in our body to provide pain relief that also causes a lot of other side effects. Now, what are some of the concerns that a parent should have if their child is prescribed opioids and has this as, you know, something that's prescribed to them? Well, I think the first question is really talking with the physician who prescribed the, the medication, um, exactly how it should be taken, um, and whether there are any other alternatives to opioids, especially for simple acute pain. Um, we found that many times over-the-counter medications like Tylenol, ibuprofen, those types of drugs are just as effective, if not more effective, than uh, some of the opioids that are prescribed. So I think a question about how much and does my child really need this, obviously with some major surgery, um, children and adolescents will need something more powerful. Um, but parents should really pay attention, making sure that the ch- children don't get too sleepy or drowsy from it, um, and they should be safely storing uh, the medications while they're being used. So let's talk about that right there, the storing. Where do you store these? Because this is something that there are people that are breaking into homes and stealing it, and friends are taking it because, you know, this is very, very addictive. How do you store medications like this properly? Well, it should be in a locked uh, storage cabinet, so not just a medicine cabinet that anybody can walk in and get. Um, so I would recommend some kind of locked cabinet. Um, yeah, you can buy those pretty easily. Uh, we certainly have locked all of our cabinets when we have toddlers, and actually unintentional overdoses in toddlers. We've lost 600 children, very young children, from accidental ingestion of opioids. So it's important to keep medications locked up, uh, even not just opioids, but all medications locked up if you have very young children around. Um, And then there's a safe disposal. We shouldn't be keeping these drugs around after the need is gone. Um, they should be disposed of either with kitty litter or down the toilet or in a collection center. And and I remember visiting with a pharmacist that said it's best to take it back to them so you know they can dispose of it properly. So if you don't know how to dispose of the medication properly, when you're going to your pharmacist for other things, just take those and say, hey, we're, we're done with this, they're expired, they're whatever, and they'll gladly help you with that. Now, how would I maybe have a conversation with my child about the potential risk of opioids and over-the-counter medications and things that maybe they need to they need to know, but we don't necessarily have these conversations. What, what kind of things should I talk to them about? I think this is really a critical importance because whether your child is prescribed opioids or not, they are in all the schools. And I think it's very important during adolescence to have these conversations. Ninety percent of addictions start in adolescence. And children that are especially vulnerable are those with ADHD. So I think it's important to to sit around and say, hey, what's going on in school? What do you hear? I hear about, you know, all these opioids, uh, this crisis. How easy is it to get? What do you know about it? Um, And really talk about the dangers of opioids. These are the kind of drugs that even with experimentation on the first time around can kill somebody. And so I think really explaining the danger of it and making sure that um, the parent has a relationship with their child so that they can talk to them about these topics is critically important during that difficult time period, really, for kids. Again, our guest today is Dr. Mary Dale Peterson. She is the president-elect of the American Society of Anesthesiologists. For people listening who maybe want to get some more information on this topic, where can we find this online? Sure. 
also the American Society of Anesthesiologists has a website, and you can just uh, go to your search engine and type when seconds count. And then I'm going to make it really easy. I'll throw a link in our show notes to make it simple to find it. Dr. Mary Dale Peterson has been our guest. Thank you again for taking the time to visit. Thank you, John. My pleasure. Again, all of the information on their website, and I'll make it easy to find. We'll throw that link in the show notes at johnandheidyshow.com. Credit cards. For years, I didn't use credit cards. We paid off all of our debt and we quit using credit altogether. But then our credit score went down. It was affecting our insurance rates. Not sure why, but that's tied to your credit score. I'm not suggesting you rack up credit card debt just to rack up credit card debt. But my wife and I now each use a credit card and then we pay them off every month. It's helped our credit score. But not all cards are the same. Some cards are better than others. If you'd like to find one that's the best fit for you, check out bettercreditcards.net. That's bettercreditcards.net. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? In Welsh folklore, corgis transported fairies. So it says the queen loved corgis. In Welsh (laughs) legend, a pair of corgis were said to tow the carts and carriages of fairies and also help them ride into battle. The diminutive dogs were the perfect dogs for herding cows. Uh, It says their their short stature kept them out of the way of the flying hooves when they nipped at the (laughs) angry cow's heels. So... Okay, Corgis. Then. They're the ones with little short legs. Yeah, you know there are. I I, I love dogs. I don't love well corgis. I th- we we I, had a person that we knew that had corgis, but I also don't like. I don't like the dogs with the short little stubby legs. Well, I don't like wiener I, dogs I, either. I think that the thing was that the, it was the person that had the corgis that you didn't like. No, I no, no. I just don't like those dogs. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm trying to give you a really, really or wiener dogs. Here, I don't Heidi. know why. I just the short little stubby legs kind of creep me out. Her name is Heidi. H e i d i. Just to, you know. I want to make sure you spell it right on the hate mail. (laughs) Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show this weekend. Join us in Las Vegas for 80s in the desert. Hear awesome 80s music from Scandal featuring Patti Smythe, A Flock of Seagulls, Richard Page of Mr. Mister, Tony Lewis from The Outfield, Pretty Poison, Thomas Dolby, and more. Also, meet people from your favorite 80s movies like Robert Hayes from Airplane, E.G. Daly from Valley Girl, and more. May 3rd and May 4th. Get more info now at 80sinthedesert.rocks. Use promo code RADIO to save $25 per ticket. Now, fear this. It's time for fun with phobias. Odontophobia. Odontophobia. What do you think that is? O-D-O-N-T-O-phobia. Fear of dentists. It is. How'd you know that? Because orthodontist, I figure it was like from that word. Odontophobia. Fear of dental surgery or fear of teeth. So... You got it. I'm, I'm going to give you, it doesn't say fear of dentist, but it's the same thing. <laughs> it's the same thing. So fear of teeth or fear of dental surgery. That is today's fun with phobias. Do you have a pretty good sense of humor? You might like this. Early in the morning each day and every day, we share something weird to make people laugh at weirdgiftofthedaycom You don't need to sign up for anything. You don't even need to spend a penny. Just follow the page on Facebook and get a smile to start each day when we share the weird gift of the day. Not on Facebook? That's okay. You can see the weird gifts on our website too. Weirdgiftoftheday.com That's weirdgiftoftheday.com now some weird news brought to you by WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com. Want to hear a weird gift, honey? Yeah. How about uh, this one here? The one from Friday was a Viking hat. And uh, it's like a... Remember watching uh, Flintstones? He had that Grand Poobah hat. It kind of looks like that to me. Yeah. I re- they called it a Viking hat. I kind of remember the yeah. Grand Poobah. I remember the Flintstones. I don't in- know if I remember the hat. Interesting hat. Here's uh, That is our weird gift from WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com. Here's our weird news. A Gainesville, Florida man was arrested when police say... He robbed a restaurant. 56-year-old Steve Allen, uh, Steve Michael Berlin. I can't talk today. No, uh, you, you're having a heck of a time armed today. Armed robbery, although he did not have a weapon. Here's what makes it weird news. He came in to the Chezwan Palace, sat down for about 30 minutes. Then he walked up to the counter and he said, I'm ready. And he holds his hand in just a gun shape, uh, pointing his finger at the man with his thumb straight up in the air. And he asked for the money. The man opened the drawer and gave him... $577. And then he walked out of the restaurant, charged with armed robbery. But it was more like... Why would he have... Finger robbery. The guy, I think the guy was just confused. You know, that he, I want that money. And he, he's literally just holding his finger at him like a gun, 
So it's like a finger gun, okay. and he robbed the Chezwan Palace that way. Well, then he deserves yeah. to be pun- punished. Yeah, well, yeah, he does. Uh, he is getting punished. He got in trouble. They found him with the 577 bucks, but what a weird story. That is uh, definitely some weird news right here on the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Now your moment of duh, brought to you by FunkyMonkeyShirts.com. A man wearing a gray sweatshirt and a wig walked up to a cash register at a Florida 7-Eleven as if he was going to make a purchase. But then, instead, he pulled out a gun and said, I want that money. Deputies say the wig helped them nab that robber because uh, the thing just occurred. The robbery did. And they were able to get a detailed susp- a description of the suspect. The man was described as being in his 20s, wearing a gray hood, a sweater, and a wig. And they found this man because uh, there was a helicopter and some canine units that, that tracked him down. And when they got there, they get to the apartment complex, and Mr. Rodriguez was in there. He's the guy that was arrested. And in his residence was a gray hooded sweatshirt and a bunch of wigs. Yeah, you probably should I mean, have tossed that stuff on the I way mean, home. Anybody could have had a gray hooded sweatshirt, but it was a large, um, uh, there were several wigs and then a large amount of wadded cash. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, kind of a dead giveaway. Yep. So he didn't do a very good job hiding all that stuff. Not a good job at all. But that's why it's today's Moment of Duh. Credit cards. For years, I didn't use credit cards. We paid off all of our debt and we quit using credit altogether. But then our credit score went down. It was affecting our insurance rates. Not sure why, but that's tied to your credit score. I'm not suggesting you rack up credit card debt just to rack up credit card debt. But my wife and I now each use a credit card and then we pay them off every month. It's helped our credit score. But not all cards are the same. Some cards are better than others. If you'd like to find one that's the best fit for you, check out bettercreditcards.net. That's bettercreditcards.net. Now, these three things. Heidi, what do these three things have in common? Fire, ear, spark. I'm going to do it again. Think about that. What do these three things have in common? If you think you know, shout out the answer. Everybody around you will think you're just as smart as Heidi, or maybe smarter, (laughs) if she can't tell us what these three things have in common. Fire, ear, spark. What do these three things have in common? An ear, like an ear? Yeah, the ear on your head, and then just the word fire, and then the word spark. I have no There's idea. something that goes behind each of these. Ear plugs, spark uh, plugs, and fire plugs. But that's not... That's so stupid. No, that that would be... How do you make these things have something in common? Those okay. three words do not have anything in common. But when you put plug with them, they do. But that is <laughs> cheating. <laughs> it's not cheating. If this you would have is, said... Have you been paying attention? This is the game, Heidi. <laughs> that is not the game. This has been the game. <laughs> it's not a good game, but it's a, it's the game. This is how we play. <laughs> That's these so stupid. This is how we play these three things. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the, to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always like to wrap things up around here with good news, and I think this is good news. Comes your way courtesy of bettercreditcards.net. And our good news sounds like this. Uh, there's, I think this is actually kind of a cool story. It says a father thanks a stranger at an airport for entertaining his daughter in the airport, and he says, this is the world I want for her. One man's heartwarming new friendship with a 16-month-old girl is proving that friendship has no boundaries. Former U.S. Marine Kevin Armantrout has been uh, waiting to catch a plane from Las Vegas to San Diego with his daughter, Carter, earlier this week, and she started befriending a fellow passenger at the airport. Carter was being her usual inquisitive self, wanting to meet and say hi to everybody that she could. And then she walked up to this man. Armantrout wrote on his Facebook page, And he reached out and asked if she wanted to sit with him. For the next 45 minutes, the man, who was identified only as a Samsung sales manager from Oklahoma named Joseph, taught Carter how to draw pictures on his tablet, watched some cartoons with her, and even accepted her generous offer to share her snacks. How cool is that? 
He said, watching them in that moment, I couldn't help but think different genders, different races, different generations, but boy, like the best of friends. This is the world I want for her in a country that continuously is fed that it's so mm-hmm. deeply divided by beliefs. I yep. want her to live a life filled with moments like this, not liberal or conservative, Republican or, Dem- Republican or Democrat, socialist or capitalist, just human. I love that. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's a there's a great photo that accompanies this story. I've got a link to it in the show notes. And this little girl uh, playing with this guy's computer, and the guy's kind of hunched over, showing her how everything works. I think it's really cool. Mm-hmm. I love that. Uh, I've got a link in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show this weekend.